healthier home live. I'm Jen. This and is I'm Ken. Ken. That's right. <laughs> How are you doing today, Ken? It's just one of these things, a, a K or a J. It's That's right. Hilarious. Here we are. Today, we're going to talk about something very exciting, everybody. Ken always has our tips and our tricks to keep us on track with our cleaning and just a little healthier in that process. And today, what are we going to be talking about disinfecting, Ken? It's summertime. It's summertime. It's we, summertime we shouldn't have to clean summer. in the summer. Well, I'm going to walk you through something that would probably tell you we probably should. <laughs> oh, man. All right. He's, I peeked at the slides. There are some surprises in here. Yeah, there, there are some surprises. And, you know, I, I I always read things. And I found an interesting piece on here and it did. It made me think about this. But I I do remember that this is actually it. nobody thinks about it, uh, summertime being the time when you're actually sick. But you, it certainly can be. And it was uh, I mean, there are a lot of times that it's happened to me. This surprised uh, me. I don't, somebody said that to me the other day. I got I got my summer cold. I was like, "What's your summer cold?" I don't usually. Right. I think of winter as when I get sick. And and that's exactly yeah. I mean, people do think about that the flu and uh, being sick in the winter time. It's it's it is true. But so this next slide. I mean, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. The um, summertime equals sick time. Is that true? <laughs> well. This is a pretty cool study because they uh, it's multi-year and it's uh, over time. So it's not like it's a little flash in the pan at Baltimore Hospital. And what they found was that uh, uh, infections can go up by up to 17% with every 10 degrees of seasonable temperature increase. So much to the point that summertime is actually you've got a 46% higher chance of being uh, sick caused by bacteria wow. than, than in the wintertime, right? And uh, the concession is the cause is unknown, but the facts are the facts and the, the seasonal variation is absolutely clear. There's no question. So summertime is actually sick time. Who would think about that? Who knew? But but there's there's a logical reason that I would throw out there and we'll uh, go on to the next slide and talk about that. There's um, bacteria actually are they're little germs. So it's like a single celled organisms. They multiply quicker when temperature and humidity is high. So they need a food source and the temperature makes them active. Cold temperatures make them go dormant. So if we think about that in the summertime, I know, I know in Florida, I've been in your neck of the woods there, sister, in it's so hot. June, July, August. And it is in a kind way, it's steamy. How's that? Yeah. Steamy hot. It is yeah, really, really like you hot. drink the air and not <laughs> breathe it. I think that's a pretty clever way of stating it. And Houston yeah. is not much different. I was I used to spend time in Houston in the summertime too. And my lord, it was humid. You'd walk from the house to the car and it was just dripping. Yeah. Um, so I mean, from that standpoint, the the temperature and humidity actually increases uh bacteria levels. So that can actually be part of that cause. So Anyway, that's a little background. That's from Ken. That's just my little throw out there. I'm not the doctor. I'm not the one doing that study. But they, you know, the fact is they're saying they can't pinpoint it, but it is a fact that this does happen. So we know infectious diseases are caused by germs. Uh, hang on, we're going to go back just a little bit. You were too quick on the draw there, uh, at best. <laughs> um, bacteria and viruses are the root cause of everything. And germs, they need a place to grow. They need a food source and moisture. And obviously, we talked about the summertime is actually part of that. Germs are spread a variety of ways, but predominantly, I mean, uh, this is why in, in uh, daycares and in, uh, uh, institutions where you might find a lot of kids, you see so much sickness. Kids are always putting things in their mouth. And, um, you know, it's as soon as you put something infected in your mouth, you're going to get it. I mean, it's just about that simple. Airborne, you know, sneezing and coughing is another way to transmit those things. And then fomites, you could touch something that might be germ infected and, uh, you know, rub your eyes or nose. And that's a great way to do that. So we want to talk about breaking that chain, you know, washing hands often, cleaning and sanitizing surfaces when and where necessary. So that's how we're going to break that chain. We're going to stop this thing. How do you like that graphic? Mm, I love it. It's chain. perfect. Hercules-like. Okay, now we can move on to that next slide there. So, I mean, we were talking summertime. Here's some things that are summertime-ish. And although these might look like two of the same types of things up on those top, you know, pools, they're actually two different pools there. 
Yeah. Um, one is like a baby wading pool, which you just kind of put your garden hose into that thing and fill it up and flop around in there. The other one is actually, you can see there's a filter and there's a pump. I had to find one just with a filter and a pump on there, but uh, usually there's it's chlorinated at that point. And chlorine is added to pools because it is a disinfectant. It's a sanitizer. So it helps kill off those pathogens. So this pool, the baby pool, you actually should probably do something other than it's it's convenient. You know, we were in Chicago when my son and his friends were younger. I had the same type of thing, a little inflatable thing, super easy to do. You fill it up and they can flop around the pool. You take it away in the wintertime. It's not like your neck of the woods where you could have a pool year round. Yeah. So these are more popular by us. But that all being said, you should add a little bit of disinfectant to that pool uh, because that's you you often get earaches, you often get infections, you can get pink eye, you can get all kinds of uh, infections from things just like this. It's sitting water and it's relatively warm. It's, a, it's like a Petri dish, actually. Oh, so I know yeah. you're having fun in the pool, but you should. And depending on the size of the pool, you can add maybe a quarter cup of just household bleach to it and it will get rid of a lot of those uh, uh, problems that are in the pool. So you can still enjoy the pool. I know it's not a big in-ground pool, or I know it's not a, a, a heavy-duty contraption like uh, some of those great spots where you are, Jen, in that <laughs> the sunshine state. Don't be but, jealous. But I, I'm not really. I'm, <laughs> okay, I'm a little jealous. You got me. I'm jealous. <laughs> anyway, that's a little tip on there with pools. There are differences in pools, so you should probably add a little uh, to that to make it uh, better. Then looking at the other things. So what else is kind of summertime-ish? Indoors, hot and humid, like we said, babies playing uh, in the toy rooms, big, big issue. So we're going to talk about some of those things we should probably do for uh, babies' toys. Uh, what yes. we should do. I do Everybody, not clean our toys often enough. I'm going to admit it here and now. I do not clean them often enough. It is, it is absolutely true. So it, it always comes down to the soil and the surface when you're cleaning something. So not all toys are the same, like teddies and soft toys. Uh, if possible, we should machine wash those suckers. It's yeah. real easy to do if, if it's possible, if they're color fast. And, and keep in mind, a lot of these things are inexpensive items, children's toys. If it's even questionable, you should really discard it. It's not worth your kid getting sick, you know, some, yeah. some of these things. But just a simple tip here, machine washable if possible. And then if you've got, uh, you've washed the teddy bears or any of these soft clothes, dry them in the sunshine. UV is a wonderful disinfectant. It, it kills everything. Sunshine is the best disinfectant. Remember Amazing. that. Amazing. So uh, bath toys. Here's a big one. We're going to be a little gross here, Jen, because we're parents. We know what it's like to be gross. There's a lot of pee in those bathtubs. They'll tell you there's not, but they did it. You know they did. I'm telling That's the first time you know a kid's lying. <laughs> did you pee in that bath? No. No. So those poor little duckies and that and that they need to be cleaned really every time. That's just the <laughs> fact. They should really be cleaned every time because not just that, we're washing off the backsides of kids too. And that's in that, you know, a kid will play in a bathtub forever if you let them with their toys. Yeah. But all that is in that bathtub. So it's yeah. uh, it's it, just thinking about it, we 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 often just have our little toys that we put in a bucket, we throw them in there. We should really clean them and we're done. So just uh, you can do a couple things. You can uh, spray them with a cleaner and then you can even spray them with hydrogen peroxide after you clean uh, uh, those bath toys and just hang them up in a little net in the bathtub. You'll be ready to go the next day. Super easy to do. Perfect. And yes, there's the, just quickly, there's a couple different disinfectants. The bleach is one of them. Hydrogen peroxide is another vinegar. Those are three real easy ones to work with, but um, hydrogen peroxide is a much safer alternative for disinfecting purposes uh, okay. when you've got kids around. Yeah. So next slide. Next slide, please. So wooden toys. Here's another thing. Now, my little baby, who's not a baby anymore, loved Thomas the Tank Engine. Loved yeah. Thomas the Tank Engine. It had the wooden tracks. Um, you really can't clean those in the same way. Wood will warp if you get it really wet. So really all we're talking about is wiping those things down with a mild cleaner, a mild cleaner, and uh, then disinfect again with hydrogen peroxide. You just spray that on and just let it sit. You don't have to do anything else. Um, dolls is another thing. Um, dolls can be, you know, sometimes they're like the Barbie dolls and they could have little, they could have hair on the head and they can have little outfits. You could, again, clean those with a mild cleaner or even shampoo them. A lot of times my my sister used to always say her her kids loved when they were uh, uh, taking baths, shampooing the doll like it was you know a person. So whatever, if they'll if they'll shampoo it, let them clean it themselves. Love it. So again, dry in the sunshine. So how often should we do this, Jen? Really, every month is a good rule of thumb. 
more often if they're really dirty, if you see that they're dirty, or if your child is sick. Those are just some real easy things to remember. Super, yeah. super easy things to remember. Love that. So at the end of the day, what is a good mild cleaner? And there's a reason you want a mild cleaner. Number one, you don't want to get your child sick if there's any residue on it. Number two, a lot of times aggressive cleaners, like you'll most grocery store items have a real high pH. They'll actually deplasticize the toy. They'll pull the plastic out of it and make it brittle. They'll actually yes. they'll ruin it. Yep. It's called deplasticizing. So this great option is right here on Healthier Home Products. It is our Kids Safe, Pet Safe, all-purpose cleaner. It is pH neutral, the same as your body. Our bodies are pH neutral. Perfect. So it's not going to be acidic. It's not going to be caustic. And it's safe for any, any washable surface. And we yes. will, we can even show you how to get a bottle of concentrate that makes 10 more bottles. It's such a good deal. Uh, amazing. I love this cleaner so much. And because you love it, I thought I'm going to throw a little video at you. If you don't mind, we're going to. I love it. it. Let's watch. <laughs> when you rub garlic on your ankle, you're going to taste it in your mouth. Why is that? Because your skin absorbs. That's one of two ways that your body ingests toxins. At Healthier Home Products, we make powerful cleaners safer. So whether it's an all-purpose cleaner that might be nine times less toxic than an on-store shelf, or whether it's a bathroom cleaner that's uh, got a unique delivery system, we look for ways to make products safer for end users, safer for the surface, and safer for the environment. Can I use this on laundry? Yes, it's an incredible laundry pre-treatment. Can I use it on floors? You're going to love it on your floors, whether they're laminate, whether they're tile, whether they're hardwood, ceramic. You're not going to see any haze. Can I use it on cabinets? Yes, you can use it on cabinets. Can I use it in the garage? Yes, you can use it in the garage. You can use it in the car. Yes, it's great in the bathroom. Yes, it's great in the kitchen. Yes, it's great. Everywhere you could possibly think that needs a washing, that product is for you. At Healthier Home Products, we make powerful cleaners safer. For more information, visit healthierhomeproducts.com. <laughs> I couldn't help but bop. I couldn't help but bop to the music. Bam, bam. Head to healthierhomeproducts.com. Yeah. <laughs> As you can see, we've got it there. Oh, what are you gonna say? Uh, it's just a little tangerine. It's just a little tangerine. The citrus, that's what powers our uh, all-purpose cleaner. It is the limonene. It's nature's cleaning agent. So whenever you're getting our healthier home uh, all-purpose cleaner, it is powered by these little suckers, which is all natural. Love it. Yes, you're going to definitely want that. And like Ken said, you can use it on everything. I use it constantly. And I'm never, frankly, worried that a little bit of it's going to spray into something that I might not notice is there, like, say, my cup of coffee in the morning or my, <laughs> it, it, like, if I'm just spraying it and I go, oh, no, my cup's over there. I go, yeah, the little got in. It's okay. <laughs> my grandmother actually uses it to clean her dentures. So, you heard it here, people. Head to healthierhomeproducts.com, grab you some all-purpose cleaner and clean those toys. Yes, for more tips. And if you have any questions for Ken, he is always here with his bestie, Aaron, to answer all of your questions. Anything else you want to leave us with today, Ken? I just want all the love in the world out to the people. That's it. I love that. All right, Ken, I'll see you next week where we will come here same time, same place and talk about something else involving cleaning and getting healthy. Thank you, Jen. Always good to see you.